Hello, Internet! This is Z Schrodinger's Cat, and welcome to another episode of Foolcraft 3. Uh, Off-camera, I've been doing a slight bit of building. I, I filled these windows with glass, and I put a little rim up there. Not not, not anything substantial, but it is starting to look pretty cool. Uh, and we also, last episode, we made this sandwich machine, which is making us a lot of lemon meringues and not a lot of BLTs, because we have no automated source of pork. I've just been killing pork. I put looting on the, the source. I accidentally looting two when I meant to put looting three, so that's why it's two and not three. Because I have this enchanter here, and I accidentally put two mob heads in uh, without uh, noting that that would give me looting two. So that's how I got here. But to automate getting pork chops, uh, I think we'll go the industrial foraging route. I, I thought about making an ender IO spawner, but those tend to require a lot of power, a lot more power than I actually have. Like, I don't know how many RF per tick, a stupid number. Uh, but uh, uh, there's a few options in industrial foraging, which is the clone of Mine Factory Reloaded. There is the, um, what's it, the animal, it, it used to be called an auto spawner, it is now called a mob duplicator, which is plastic, okay, there's this, dry rubber, and then there's like a process to get that. We could do that, but that I believe require if, if this is the same as Mine Factory Reloaded, it requires us to get mob essence, which requires us to make... I, I guess we could do it at the mob farm we already have. We, we could convert that into a mob essence farm, but there's also this uh, mob... this um, baby... Uh, animal baby separator, which I believe... animal feeder and animal baby separator will... Uh, animal rancher uh, that that will separate babies from the uh, adults so in theory you could set it up so that you you have uh, animals breeding and then you push the babies away and then you slaughter the uh, the adults so I I'm thinking of doing that it's more complicated but it's also something I've never done before so I'm thinking I might try it. I, I did I did the uh, the auto farm spawner thing in Project Ozone 2, so let's try pigs a different way. The first step of this is to produce liquid latex because that's what's gonna give us rubber. So according to this thing, we get the tree fluid extractor and then we place a, a, a log in front of it, uh, any log, I guess, and it will slowly produce, it will slowly attract X that it will slowly produce liquid latex. Uh, and uh, so I guess that we can set it up. Uh, it consumes a log eventually. So what I'm thinking we could do is set up a mechanical user to place logs and then the liquid log whatever extractor will extract the stuff and then when it's gone it places another log and that's automated. So I'm gonna get that stuff together. So if I have this set up right, I should be able to... No. That's not right. Does this not take power? Hold on. Does this not take power? Oh, it doesn't take power. Interesting. Hold on. Latex tank, fluid containers. Okay. Cool. Story, bro. Uh, so I should be able to put this here? And then we'll turn it into latex? It will. I'm really surprised this doesn't need power. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave it here anyway, because, let's see, what I want to do is, I wonder if this automatically outputs. Does it? The answer is no! Okay, I will need to get a, let's see, I, I also have this latex processing unit, which I have no idea how to use at all in any way. So, fluid water? What? Why does it say fluid water? Okay, so can I take this fluid thing and extract here, always active, and insert into here? Mm, yes, I can. What's the second liquid that I need? Hold on. Uh, energy, energy items, water tank, latex tank, output items, fluid containers. Okay, there is some reading that I have to do in this book that I made. I got it working. All I had to do was supply it with water. 
So it takes water, it takes latex from this thing. Okay, you can see that it's breaking it slowly. All right, so that's not that's not too bad. It looks like it, it produces quite a bit of latex from just one log, because this is still just one log, too. So what are these, how, how are these used, tiny dry rubber? Is these, these, okay, okay, so it's not actually that much. It's, these are, you require nine of these. So I have about one little plastics worth, but, then I can set up this mechanical user, like that, and then I can say, place block, my dog's barking away, and then when it uh, gets done, I can place it here. And what I can do, actually, I hadn't even thought of this, but it works out well, is I can just pipe directly from this wood barrel, because uh, I'm producing wood anyway, as, as a product of our lemon production. So, we can... I'll just have this on a regular green channel. Green, always active, and extra... Insert. Okay. So now this should fill with wood, and that this should keep going forever and ever. And now, can they, do these have priority... That is not what I wanted to do. That is not what I wanted to do. Give me that. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, so I, I wish... I want these to have... I did the same thing. I did the same thing. Same thing. Again. Did it twice. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Fool me three times. Well, I got nothing. Yeah, I, I, these can't do priority. I think... Uh, I don't know. I don't even know if the ender fluid conduits one can do priority. What I want to do is set up a drum so that if it in if, if it uses more latex than this uses okay so what i can do uh to solve that problem is i can take this away right and then i can put this uh, here and then i can put a drum here drum and then i can Ooh, these are gonna connect aren't they oh uh, nope nope they won't connect because they are smart like me. Okay, so, yep, that's liquid latex. Let's just make sure this is, okay, that's right. And then this is extract, always active, and then insert. Oh, conduits. Yay, conduits. Okay, can this go extract, please? Well, my quest to fix the conduits is going like it usually does. But I think I found out the problem. There was water in my drum. Stupid fluid conduit put water in my drum wouldn't let latex in my drum, so it stopped working. That was a problem. Boy, this place is hard to get around. I wish I had flight. Or that damn spite. That damn. Those damn climbing gloves from Cyclic are so nice. I have them in Sentech and they make me so happy, and I don't have them here, and it makes me sad. But, okay, this was the problem. I was trying to fix the conduit settings, and I fell through the floor because that's my life. Okay, extract. And insert. And now it should go in here. Yeah. And then excess should go in here. And if there is a backlog, like if this fills up, which it surely will because this system is completely automated and self-sufficient, yay, uh, it will go into the drum and we will have much latex for many fun times. I put a drawer here for the for the what's it's this whole setup is very ugly. It's all out in the open, but there really is no place to hide cables or anything. Because this here is a bunch of slabs and this is immediately downstairs as you saw I fell through. So here it is, and we can now use these things. We can come here and then we can uh, make them into regular rubbers. And now that we have our regu regular rubbers, we can enjoy our safe sex and also make our plastic that we are in the wrong room for. Okay, over here. Alright, hey. Meh, meh. Furnace? Tiny? Rubber? Dry rubber. Yay! And now we have these things! And so we should be able to make our, uh, our pig farming thingies. So this room is still unfinished and pretty ugly, but that's okay. It has pigs in it, so we're gonna do it here! I made the mop crusher, baby separator, and the animal feeder. And I've also made a mop, an adult filter, which we will uh, learn about. So basically, well, I wish, where's the middle of this room? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the middle. It's not what I wanted. These machines place differently than every other mop. 
They place backwards, which is annoying. However, we have now the Mob Crusher, and the Mob Crusher can take an adult filter, and I believe that will mean that this will only kill adult mobs. So, that means that we can then take the Baby Separator, which I don't know which way that goes, like this. I have no idea. No clue. We'll have to test that. But, that should uh, allow us to move babies over here in front of the crusher, and it won't kill them until they grow up and are able to drop their goods. So, I will have a separate pen here for uh, just breeding pigs, and a separate and a, and a pen here for babies as they grow up. Now, the animal feeder, which I don't know which way it goes, uh, will, uh, I believe, it will take um, uh, food, and it will automatically breed the pigs. So, hopefully that works. Um, we can bring... Uh, my dog's having a, having a good time out there. Uh, we can add another garden close up there for carrots, and we can bring down carrots and put it in here, and uh, it'll be great. I've got the thingies in, and the only way I can really pipe into this, because if I put them on the top, the pigs will get out, is to go underneath. So that's what I did. And it has the cables installed, basically. So I believe the only thing that has item transfer, this doesn't have item transfer, is uh, the this thing, which requires us to insert carrots, and this thing, which requires us to export uh, mod drops. And I believe, if it's like MFR, uh, that it should output uh, all of its drops to a chest that's behind it, and then we can extract... I have, I have the carrots over here inserting on the green channel, and I have the stuff from the this thing extracting on the brown channel so now I can then take the uh, the old garden cloche uh, garden cloche garden cloche there it is clochified excuse me excuse I, I, I do declare I do declare okay dirt no I need the dirt damn it uh, conduit conduit is now my new stepping stone Yay! It didn't work very well. It worked pretty badly. Now it worked! <laughs> now I can edit this and pretend it worked the first time. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's bring it up. Bring it up one. Uh, mm, mm, mm. No, no. Don't want that. Uh, close. And then we put this in here and that in there. And then we take the reservoir right here this is this is our old process by now old reliable process uh, pressurized fluid conduits in the water buckets and we've done this many times now it's like uh, rehearsing a song a song of water and something where does the, the fluid go into damn it does it need to go down i guess it does need to go down here and i'm trapped in the fence again great okay great wonderful this is going fantastic all right uh I'm gonna get really confused about why there's an item dock there later, but that's okay. We'll deal with that when we get to it. Extract, and this should insert. Uh, nope, not extract. I want to insert to here, and this should have water. And as soon as we power everything, we can see if it works. Uh, but this should create carrots, and the carrots should go down here. I don't think there should be any other byproduct because it's just carrots. So, uh, we'll see what happens when we actually connect power to a real power source. What a concept. I guess I'm just gonna... I don't know. I didn't plan this place well as far as hiding gables go, but that, I never do that. So, it's, uh, it's uh, par for the course. I'll just have to come up here and... And so on. No, these stupid things have to be powered from the top, and I'm too conduit short. Now we have power, and we're getting carrots. But I want to just jumpstart this system a little bit and put the carrots in here and see what happens and find out if my thingy is oriented correctly. Which. Uh, it does not appear to be, unless it needs a range upgrade, but I think, is there, is there anything like a precision sledgehammer that I can use to, to, let's see, precision, no, uh, foraging, is there a thingy that I can use, a straw, no, there appears to be no item to tell whether or not the thing is working, so, that's not great, that's not ideal, but, oh, come on. Oh, this place is so difficult. Back to the scaffolding conduit, because I need to get in there. I need to flip the damn machine. Cute. Oh, 
Thank you. Okay. You get you get a wrench? Now it works? Do I misunderstand how this stupid thing works? Oh! Oh! It worked! It's over here! Nice! And the, and the mob grinder is not killing it, so that's good. Uh, I'd love to know what the range on these things is by default, but I don't appear to be able to see how, so great. Show work- Oh! There's a button to show working area. Okay. Derp. Uh, what's that? Let me up! Free me from this prison. Uh, the wiki said that it had a default of 7x7. Seven seven. And this, this, does not appear to be 7x7. Seven seven. Uh, okay. Well, that explains some things. I guess I will need to get uh, range upgrades for these. So, it should be uh, that it's uh, a radius increase. So, I should... Let's see, range... Uh, range add-on. It should only be this, uh, because we only need it to be 3x3 three three for each of them, so that's pretty cheap. I can add the range upgrades to them. Okay, where are we? Here? Okay, I need to open the inventory. That's- Whoa! That's way bigger than I wanted. What? I... <sighs> How come it's so much bigger? Why can't it just be a little bit bigger? Uh, tier 1. Okay, is there like a lesser tier? Range add-on tier 2. Tier 0. Okay, let me try that. Okay, there we go. I thought the cobblestone one was a minus 1 thing, because that's how it was in Mind Factory Reloaded. I, I guess my, the lesson here is don't always go on the assumption that it's the same as MFR. So, yeah, that should be that. And then this should be that. And still not killing the babies, which is good. And... Yeah. So... I think this is working. I should have pork over here in this gold chest. I don't. Okay, I still need to set up the vacuum ha ha vacuum chest. I forgot. I totally forgot about the vacuum chest. Wait. This time the items went in here. How come they went in here this time, but not the other time? I'm confused. Also, why isn't it being pulled out? Did I forget to set the settings? Potentially. I sure did. Always active. Okay. It's not pulling it out. Am I on the wrong channel? Yeah, I sure am. Woo! Wrong channel. Okay, there we go. Now it should work. Nope. Okay. Okay. Alright. Uh. Okay. Curious. These are. These machines are so. Finicky. Fluid containers. Mob drop output. Okay. I have extract. Always active. On the brown. And I have insert. On the brown. In this chest. So why can I not pull it out? Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with this. Why is this not pulling out? Why is my life so hard? I guess it has to export from the back. I added a connection here and it's working now? I also look at the wiki, and apparently there is a, a mob grower, which should, let's see, grower, grower, which should allow us to increase the speed of the animal growth here to match, uh, w w w using, uh, uh, these, uh, carrots, using carrots, and it, each feeding will increase the chance of growth by 10%, and so on average it should reduce the uh, the thing from 20 minutes to uh, to like 40 seconds, which is cool, but I, I'm i not especially convinced that it's necessary because our production of carrots is... Why? Oh my god. Okay, I get it. Alright. All right, fine. Be that way. Oh, why can't you just be eyesighted like everything else? Extract on greens. Always active. Can I please get carrots now? Ah, oh, yes. There we go. Now it might be necessary. I don't know. I've been busy. I'm basically, if you look at journey map here, laying out some, some road structures for this place. I actually did planning. I, I went into Photoshop and I made a doodle. 
for where I want the roads to be for this place. And naturally, the first thing that I did was immediately deviate from it. So that's going well. But yeah, I, I have this sort of square here. I'll put the little picture in front of the thing. It's it's like, uh, hold on. I'll go look at it. It's... It's like a, it's like we've got this diamond thing with these three little bulbous uh, nodules on the end. And then it's, it's going to be pretty symmetrical, uh, but I think that it will be on a large enough scale that the symmetry isn't, isn't too boring. I want to have a lot of height variations here, so that's why it's going all the way up. And I want it sort of zigzagging through heights, height like that, so it's not just a straight road up. And then in the middle here, I'm going to have buildings and stuff. I also came down here, I dug into the ground. Now, if I can get over to the yonder, uh, this place is already so big, so big. But I want, I want it to basically, I want to have a structure that comes out here and like has a big pillar into the ocean and same over here and then i gotta have a big palace that's let's just press all the keys open all the menus i'm gonna have big like big palace here this here is gonna be which you cannot see my mouse doing because of how i'm recording this but the uh area to the left the by the square that way over there is gonna be the, t the tallest part probably in the structure unless it's not and i changed my mind in which case, it won't be the tallest part. But that's the plan for right now. I dug, I dug this gigantic hole, and I've begun covering this thing in acacia logs, and then I immediately ran out because it's very large. But I'm going to have a road here, and I'm, I have this pathway up here. I'm not sure what I'm doing over here. Originally, I was going to have another pathway, but now that I've laid out all these roads and stuff, I'm thinking it might be better if I got rid of this stuff and, and had some more layers of things. I will have to remove this um, dungeon thing here because it is not in the block palette. So it will have to go even though it is actually a pretty nice building. But I have this going all the way around. I basically have it hugging um, all the way where I have the fence here. So now I, I, I want to continue laying out roads, basically. I'm extending this one for this way. This is, hold on. This is where we are here now. Uh, I extended this out and I'm probably going to extend this out however long I extend this out. So we'll have one overhang over the ocean and we'll have one overhang over this like swampy mangrove area. Now I could use the extra utilities biome changer to change the biome so that the grass color and like all, and just is the same as this and remove all the trees, but I don't think that's as interesting. I think I like the idea of having this, uh, like, uh, palace type thing up here or, or like a cathedral or whatever I decide to put up here, grand structure, uh, dangling over and underneath the structure, there's like a really grody swamp-like area like this structure like this sort of city has been built or in this really like swampy area and then through i guess the power of their sun god they have they're starting to like regenerate the land around it that could be a possibility or something like that i i i i love the i always like when two biomes or two um themes meet each other and try to work it and incorporate them into each other. I think that I think that adds uh, interest as you travel across the land, things change in our dynamic. And then out in the, the ocean, I want to have a series of platforms with structures on it. I think that would be cool. And that is a lot of roads. So I have this diamond thing, which I'll go over later. And then I have this square thing, which is like sideways, which I really like the the uh, slantedness of this. It's, it's a pretty boring shape. It's just square, but it's higher on one side and it, and it goes down. And I think that will make a really cool uh, uh, view when and we get buildings and stuff in it. And I want to I want to add more roads, but I don't know like there's I for one, I'm tired of making roads. And two, I are am, this is already a huge space, so I kind of want to see if I can fill in this space before I take over the entire world with my giganticness. But I have this diamond thing up here because this is what I what I want the uh, big uh, feature cathedral to 
to be. I want it to be a very symmetrical structure with this four-way, with this two-way inter intersection in the middle, and then there'll be like super high arches, and I'll put something cool in the middle, stuff like that. Well, it's been about three days. I got a little carried away with roads and platforms and all this kind of stuff. I don't even remember what was here the last time I recorded. I say that a lot. I say that too much. I should watch my own recordings. Meh. But... Yeah, I've, I've just been... A, a lot of this stuff, so, uh, where'd my glider go? A lot of this stuff doesn't, uh, make good content for, uh, on camera, so I kind of just, like, banged it all out. So I have all these platforms, I placed a lot of dirt, I dug a lot of dirt, and it looks nothing, absolutely nothing, like the drawing I did in Photoshop. So that was worthwhile, uh, but that's okay. I got these, like, X-type things... I was f fiddling around. I changed it a lot, I think, from, from the last clip. I had this square thing in the middle that had the four squares, but I took half of them out because it just, just from an overhead view, it was very chaotic, and I needed to enter in some, some patterns to actually make it look cohesive, so I've made these uh, diamond-shaped plus things uh, over here and all, all over the place and I have these platforms coming along and uh, so this is supported up here I don't entirely know if I, I, I have these shapes here uh, and uh, uh, some of them are pretty weird like this one right here is pretty weird this platform here but I'll also have buildings coming out so we can continue sh ah, we can continue to fix the shape uh, you know as as we do it I also I made I made the, well, I didn't make. I found and I upgraded these dark boots because uh, they didn't let me jump. And I also have this glider. I don't remember if I mentioned that. But now it is mentioned. Consider it officially mentioned. But there's a lot of... There's some there's some interesting um, areas around here. Uh, I like how it it's, it's kind of... I, I took the acacia all the way around this building well not all the way around most of the way around this building uh, because i completely cleared out an acacia biome uh, but i want to do this probably i'll probably do the same walls for up here and around here and and just all of this the the thing that i don't i really don't like about this is this part completely different than the rest of it. This is very geometric, and this is very, like, what it was. It looks, it looks like an ear, honestly. Uh, but it was here originally, and it's staying, and I'm not I'm not changing it. Not at all. Nope. Not denied. Uh, but that is probably all the time we have for this episode. So next time, I guess we will continue to do the thing. Oh, I got a lot of beef. I got so much, I got so, not beef, pork. I got so much pork. I got like an insane amount of pork. I also have an insane amount of lemon meringues. It's just, it's just everything. Oh, look at all this. I just, too much, too much food. But uh, that's, uh, let me, let, let me show you the amount of dirt that I collected. See, see these chests here? See how there's like seven chests with dirt related names? That's the amount of dirt that I had to dig up because I, I I just had these were all full at one point and then I emptied them out because I needed dirt to place back down in other places so this has been my life these four these seven chests my life but that is that's gonna be it for today so I'm gonna say good day to you internet and thank you for watching